take three celebrities. Send them off to a remote house in the country. Then seal them in. With no computers, TVs, newspapers or mobile phones, they'll be completely cut off from the outside world. So how will they know what's been going on while they've been in the bubble? Good evening, I'm David Mitchell and welcome to The Bubble, the show where we ask three celebrities to spend the week completely cut off from the outside world. No newspapers, no TV, no internet, nothing. We've still got their mobile phones, so for all they know, they've got any number of picture messages from Ashley Cole to sort through. <laughs> Before we release them back into the community, we're going to show them a selection of news reports. Some of them are genuine, some of them have been faked. But will they be able to tell the difference? So, let's meet tonight's guests. Straight from the bubble, please welcome Reginald D. Hunter, Victoria Corrin and Frank Skinner. Hello. Welcome to you all. And just to confirm, you have been completely isolated from the news this week, haven't you? Is that right? We certainly have. That is true. Right. Uh, any clues on the way here? We tried to guess some likely news stories. I like Zara Phillips' kidnap. <laughs> <laughs> Only today they sent her finger. <laughs> <laughs> I would like that if they don't want it. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to show you a selection of news stories, TV reports, headlines and newspaper articles from recent days. All you have to do is decide which are the real stories and which are the fakes. What could be simpler than that? So let's start with some TV news stories. You're going to see three news reports, only one of which was really on TV while you were in the bubble. The other two are fakes. So can you spot the real story? Let's have a look at report A. It's the high-tech face of modern crime fighting. Controlled remotely, the drone can beam back pictures to a computer on the ground from up to 500 metres away. Last week, Merseyside police used it to catch a suspected car thief in thick fog. The arrest hailed as a landmark moment. But a week on, it's the police who've fallen foul of the law. The police should have had permission to fly the drone from the Civil Aviation Authority. It could now impose a fine of over £2,000. There's certainly an argument to be run for the suspects in this case. Um, that the evidence that's been obtained could be excluded under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act. It's unlikely to succeed because that's down to the discretion of the judge. The drone was hailed as groundbreaking, but until the CAA investigation's over, it's grounded. So, Victoria, what, what do you think? Does that seem plausible to you? No, the police all have guns now. They're not going to need a remote-controlled children's helicopter. It's not one or the other. You can have both. <laughs> you wouldn't want one of them with a gun on it. That would be quite risky, wouldn't it? <laughs> if it suddenly yeah. went out of control and was just flying around Liverpool shooting people. Not that people don't do that, but not the police. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the police do do that. You're right, it could happen. <laughs> I, I was with it. I, at first, the first few seconds, I thought, OK, it could be legit. It could be something they, they would do. But then I stopped believing it when they said that um, Merseyside police caught a car thief. And then... <laughs> And then I was like, OK, all right, it's fake. <laughs> well, I thought if it was fake, no actor would have done that performance. <laughs> <laughs> For a start off, you could never walk into any wardrobe person at, on television and they'd give you those spectacles ever. <laughs> but he played it so deadpan, so he looked like a man with the weight of the whole world on his shoulders. <laughs> I th that could, no actor would have been brave enough to have played him that bleak. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking it's real now. Wouldn't they just steal that? I mean, if you can steal a car, surely a little plastic thing hovering there. No, but I think... Oh, it, I can it, explain it, that. Okay. It's like several feet above your head. And... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am a man of science, and, uh, <laughs> and if it's several feet above your head, and if it's hard to reach, then you'll just stand there staring at it. I think that man looked like he might be the sort of man who would develop a flying camera, but not for crime-fighting purposes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
just say <laughs> deep levels to that man. That man has already had quite an effect on me. Remember, I've been locked away for four days. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the time has come... <laughs> to see another to look, one. ...to see, yeah, story B. York, the most haunted city in England. Ghost sightings are commonplace. The Grey Lady, Thomas Percy, Robert Ask, and now... <laughs> Big Daddy. Over the last year in the city, there have been eight reported sightings of the legendary northern wrestler who died in 1997. Enough to earn him a place on a ghost tour run by the ghost creeper of York himself. Well, there have been several sightings of Big Daddy around town, about uh, eight uh, so far, as far as we know. Uh, one of the places where he comes is along here on this side alleyway. Uh, we don't know exactly why he comes down here. People are surprised by it. They don't expect someone like him to pop up here. But uh, I just tell them that uh, we have a new ghost in town. But the people of York are divided on this newcomer. The idea of Big Daddy wandering about as a ghost, I think it's rather fun. Cods roll it. <laughs> oh, ghost, man. You're gone, you're gone. With his signature leotards and record-breaking 64-inch chest, Big Daddy certainly stands out from the regular ghostly crowd. So, Frank, what do you think of that? You're not asking me if Big Daddy's actually walking around York <laughs> in a ghostly <laughs> form. I suppose I'm asking, is that being alleged in the news? I mean, I like it. If it isn't, whoever came up with that idea gets a big tick from me. <laughs> you can't imagine people sitting in an office saying, what about, oh, Big Daddy's haunting York? Yeah. <laughs> Victoria. I can imagine with modern dietary problems, you walk around any English town, you'll see a lot of people that look like the ghost of Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm kind of with Frank. I don't know how many drugs you'd have to take to come up with that idea. I would say, I mean, as a sceptic, that either this programme has fabricated the concept of the ghost of Big Daddy <laughs> going around York, or someone else has. I would for now reject that maybe the ghost of Big Daddy's walking around York. <laughs> you don't have to, right? Uh, well, let's, uh, let's have a look at Report C. Mum's net an online resource offering advice and support to parents across the UK. With over a million members, many of whom are floating voters, it already looks set to become a key election battleground. Nick Clegg, Gordon Brown and David Cameron have all taken time to woo the Mumsnet community via live web chats. But now tactics appear to have got a bit more underhand. Party activists are believed to have been infiltrating the site, starting discussions and posting threads in the hope of influencing the election. Mumsnet moderators became suspicious when overtly political threads from new members began appearing on the site. The majority of the suspicious posts were traced to just three IP addresses, which were each found to have links to the three major parties. We can see them a mile off because they never talk about anything other than party lines on their political issues. They never moan about their husbands. We'd love to have them on Mum's Net, but don't pretend to be something you're not. As political parties try harder than ever to win over voters, this controversy can't help but call into question the lengths they're prepared to go to in the run-up to the election. Right. Well, you've seen all three now. What's looking most plausible? Well, part of the problem is I don't even remember the second one. And, um... <laughs> The this... ghost of Big Daddy. Oh, yeah. 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 Do you all remember that? <laughs> okay. It was, it was Big Daddy no, flying a helicopter. No reason to make me feel bad about it. <laughs> I had a, a sort of blind rage in my hatred of Mum's Net. The word <laughs> Mum's wow. Net. It's just, it's just a place where women with children go on and congratulate each other on having children. Um. I've got children. Have you? Me too. Yes. Well done, all of you. <laughs> and then I don't I, know what else yeah. they write about. I am so glad. <laughs> I am so glad you said that, because if I had said it, I would look like an asshole. <laughs> Maybe women without children just shouldn't have the vote at all. What do you think? Just remove the vote. <laughs> just, you know, no. It's just... They all just, just sit there discussing what kind of biscuit oh. do you like? Digestives. Good, you get four votes. Right. <laughs> Maybe the rest yeah. of us should have no power at all. So, to recap, then, the three stories are, A, police used their drone illegally, B. Big Daddy's ghost is haunting York. 
and C, Mumsnet hijacked by political activists. Please vote now. Oh, right. Frank and Victoria have gone for B, Big Daddy's ghost, and Reg for A, police used their drone illegally. And I have to say it is A, and Reg is right. <laughs> I was right about that man. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, had an actor watch me saying what a terrible drab person that was, he'd have been really pleased that he'd done such a good performance. <laughs> when yeah. the real person watches it, <laughs> he's going to be even bleaker in his yeah. mouth than he was on that. I'm sure he's an excellent solicitor. Uh, Victoria and Frank, you both went for the Big Daddy story. Because we couldn't imagine that somebody would invent that. Right. I'm delighted okay. that they did. Right. And yet, at the same time, disappointed. I was mentally planning a trip to York. Right. No point now. Nothing mental about going to York. It's a lovely place. Um, <laughs> uh, what I'm interested to know is why did none of you go for story C, which just seemed sort of drably plausible, didn't it? What I decided to do was, like, I said A was implausible, and then I said B was implausible, and then I said C was implausible. But the whole time, I was thinking A. And, <laughs> but I just did that to confuse them. And, and, and what I did not count on but went in my favor is Victoria's hatred of mothers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that means at the end of that round, uh, only Reg gets a point. <laughs> uh, Next, we're going to move on to newspapers. So, three newspaper stories here, only one of which was genuinely reported while you were in the bubble. Two we've made up. Can you tell the difference? Here's story A. There's a new app for the iPhone that will tell you if your breath smells. <laughs> I can just tell by the smell of my phone after I've had a long conversation. <laughs> I always assume it must be my breath and not the breath of the person I was speaking to. <laughs> I, th I think you do right, yeah. But I do feel that an iPhone... Not that it's by any means better than the other phones on the market. <laughs> <laughs> but I do feel that you could probably have an app that did absolutely anything. You could have the Big Daddy Ghost app. <laughs> uh, well, let's have a look at the second story which is that uh, BBC News has banned its journalists from appearing in fake reports for this programme. What? <laughs> Did I play Hamlet while we were in the box? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely, rather moody, truthful photo of you. You're yeah, obviously... but I, it can only have been taken while I was away. I've never seen that before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. You've chosen this to be quite an early question. And maybe that's because you know if it came up later, we'd have already seen BBC News readers, so we would know that it wasn't true. Oh, or... my God, you're thinking very deviously. <laughs> or Thank we wouldn't much. have hmm. seen any and we'd know that it was true. Oh, my God, you're thinking very deviously. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Red? Now, this I is think... your cue to think deviously. <laughs> <laughs> I think Frank looks very hopeful in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's look at the third one, which is that in the updated Thomas the Tank Engine TV series, they are introducing a gay character. <laughs> the, the new gay engine will look just like the other trains, though we'll have a slightly different coupling mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's the kind of PC thing they, they might do while relaunching Thomas the Tank Engine? You know, I wish there had been some gay trains when I was a kid, man, cos... <laughs> You know, I was only 30 before I accepted that it was okay for people to be gay. And if I had had some gay trains, I probably would have came to that at least a year earlier. It's a terrible idea. This is a story about trains. How would the gayness manifest itself? What are they going to do? How do you know? Well, would they speak in a different well, funny I, voice? Well, I, for it one, <laughs> I'd like to hear the sound of the gay trains whistle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just curious. You, you don't think it's a good idea for kids? You think no. it's a bad idea? Yeah. Why you, you, you don't think kids should know about gayness? Because, I, okay, stick with me closely. Okay. They're, they're trains. Uh huh. They're trains. They, we don't see track. them having sex or love relationships. Well, I know Therefore... lots of gay people, but I ain't never seen them have sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I think the wheels might be a bit closer together than the other train. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a slight... Short of giving it... <laughs> <laughs> okay. How did I get into this trap? I haven't done these jokes for five years. Yeah. <laughs> I think the time has come to vote. Is it A, the I Stink app now available, B, the bubble hit by BBC Boycott, or C, Thomas gets a new gay friend? Uh, which one's a real story? Vote now, please. Oh, you've all gone for the I Stink, which you didn't seem that convinced by, and I can tell you you're all wrong. The correct answer, lamentably, is B. <laughs> is, the bubble has been hit Fantastic. by uh, BBC Boycott. The head of BBC News has banned reporters from having anything to do with making fakes for this programme. Any footage in the fake stories come care of our friends at ITV and Sky. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, big, big round of applause for those guys. Um, uh, yes, now apparently it would undermine BBC News because if they turned on... Uh, saw something ridiculous with the bubble in the corner, they'd think, oh, this is some BBC News story. <laughs> um, oh, you must have had such an annoying week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's put it like this way, we've had to modify our plans. But, you know, that's a, it's a boring production issue, you know. Couple of researchers have killed themselves. But... <laughs> BBC, could they have not thought... Now, we're gonna, we've got a new comedy show which has pretend news stories. Let's have a bit of a think about whether we can have pretend news stories. No, 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 no. The BBC doesn't act like an entity. It acts <laughs> like a warring federation. <laughs> you know. Can I it's say a... I am completely on the side of the BBC <laughs> in this? Because without them, that photo would never have been in the newspaper. <laughs> and that's yes. the best photo I've ever had taken. Well, <laughs> good. In uh, fact, in, from now on, every photo I do, I'm going to look up in the air like that, because that's, <laughs> that's my best side. <laughs> was a real newspaper page? Yes. Those pictures were in the paper? Y yes. I hate that picture. <laughs> you just get a grip about the pictures. <laughs> look, I look good, Reg looked good, and as Meatloaf said, two out of look. three <laughs> years. <laughs> look, you, you, you all look lovely in the pictures that they use to illustrate my professional hell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, none of you went for the gay Thomas the Tank Engine, which... Uh, and I think, as, you, as Victoria rightly pointed out, there, it's not as if they are sexual in any way, those engines, and so the only way of representing one as gay would be liking musicals. <laughs> <laughs> so I genuinely wonder and sort of hope that the kind of, oh, I'm gay, so I must like musicals thing will disappear after a hundred years of homosexuality being totally accepted. <laughs> and, you know, it'd be perfectly possible to hate musicals and be gay. Me beginning to think you protest a little too much over there. Uh, <laughs> feel like you've got some real strong yeah. feelings about this. Uh, yes, either I'm secretly gay or I secretly love musicals. <laughs> because if I was secretly both, that would be fine. <laughs> Anyway, at the end of that <laughs> round, no one gets a point. <laughs> um, you've all been living together all week in a, in a house. It's uh, like a sitcom. How, how was it? I really, no phones, no internet. It was like a, having a holiday in Shakespeare's time. But it was like that only at the end of series one. Uh, <laughs> series two of our sitcom involved a lot of sitting at the table and uh, hearing uh, uh, stories from Frank. Frank got a million of them. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Strange, because he's, he's not all talked out. <laughs> I learned how to play snooker. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Frank, let's, uh, let's have a look at a montage of your best bit. <laughs> all righty! <laughs> uh, well, we'll stay with newspapers for our next round because uh, while you're away... Because the BBC won't let you have any clips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah one of the reasons. Anyway, <laughs> we're looking at newspapers because a number of them uh, printed a photograph while you were away of a tin of Whiskers cat food. Not that interesting, you might think, but there was something unusual inside it. Any ideas what? A cat. <laughs> oh. A small one? A dead one. 
What's it? A small boxing glove on a spring. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the three alternatives. Was it... Uh, a, a chicken tikka masala, due to a labelling mix-up at the factory. Slightly worrying that the factory makes both in that instance. <laughs> B, and you touched upon this, Reg, the head of a cat. <laughs> It's like uh, the Godfather cat was sending a message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the Godfather cat, though, would it? Because the Godfather sends horses' heads. So it would have to be the Godfather of an organism to whom the, their horses are like our cats. After the show, let's get you a girlfriend. All right. <laughs> See, not only do I have to cope with that put down, <laughs> also the loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> C is the face of the Virgin Mary on the inside of the lid. Oh, oh boy. Um, so, what, what was it that turned up in a tin of whiskers this week? Please vote A, B or C. Oh, right, two of you going for the uh, face of the Virgin Mary and Reg going for a chicken tikka masala. Well, I have to tell you that you're all wrong. <laughs> well, for some reason, I'm oddly pleased about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as gruesome as it sounds because the rest of the cat was still attached, as, as we can see. Oh, that's oh. cheap, man. That's Thanks. cheap. Man. You made it sound like somebody bought a tin from the store and then they came home and opened it up and it could have been the Virgin Mary, it could have been a uh, head of a cat, or it could have been chicken tikka masala. Not somebody just stuck a tin on a cat head, man. <laughs> man that ain't, man. I hope you feel well, bad, man. You should feel yeah. bad about that, man. No, I, I, we, uh, it's, it was a deliberate trick you fell for. That's all right. We're supposed to be tricking you. But not all the time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is just a cat that turned up at the Middlebank Wildlife Centre near Dumfries. It uh, managed to find that with a tin on its head. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> we don't know what it was looking for. <laughs> Uh, well, unfortunately, that means that none of you get a point for that. Uh, here's something else that's been in the news while you've been away. Have a look at this footage. It's uh, two men in tennis gear getting out of a lift, as you can see. And the question is, were those men, A, two British MPs on a fact-finding trip to a five-star Dubai hotel, B, two highly trained assassins on a murder mission, or C, Ant and Deck setting up a prank for a new show. <laughs> so please vote A, B or C now. <laughs> Have you voted? Oh, well, no, I ain't voted yet. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> you, want me to, you want me to try my hardest, don't you? Uh, no, I just want you to vote now, really. <laughs> Slow expectations has got you where you at. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I hope after you've taken me apart, you are going to put <laughs> me back together again. <laughs> so, Victoria and Reg have gone for A, and Frank has gone for the highly trained assassins. And Frank is right. <laughs> they, they are part of a gang of 11 Israelis, allegedly, who, who managed to bump off a leading member of Hamas in a Dubai hotel whilst dressed as tennis players. And that's the first funny take on a murder. But, you know, you know so I had a slight advantage then because I, I know them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're mates of David Badil. <laughs> Could you say Hamas again? No. <laughs> um, there were... <laughs> There's been a bit of a stink about them this week because uh, they were using fake British passports and travelling under the names of real British people. The Israeli Foreign Minister said of it, Israel never responds, never confirms, never denies. He then went on to say, Israel had a policy of ambiguity on intelligence matters. Now, never has a denial to me said more loudly, yeah, we did, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, that's the kind of thing we do, watch out. <laughs> I love a policy of ambiguity, that's yeah. fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I might adopt one of those myself <laughs> for the rest of the show. <laughs> I may not. <laughs> uh, anyway, that policy. means at the end of that round, Frank gets a point. Hurrah. <laughs> okay. 
Our final round is on the buzzer. I'll read out some news stories from the last week, which may or may not be real. If you're first to buzz in, answer real or fake. If you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you lose a point. And I can tell you that at the moment, it's very close. There's nothing in it. Let's begin with... <laughs> Gordon Brown has caused a diplomatic row by claiming he was given a roasted pig by a Muslim state. <laughs> That's true. It is. It's real. An internet poll to find the sexiest member of the House of Lords was won by Alan Sugar. Right. Yes. No. True. Real. <laughs> <laughs> fake. That fake. That was yeah, the fake. fake. Anyway. Adrian Childs has admitted that he grew his beard because he's converting to Islam. Uh. <laughs> I think that's fake. It is fake. <laughs> Jordan and Alex Reed have announced they are to divorce. Uh. Fake. That's fake. Thank C God for that. Yeah. <laughs> I had a real shudder yeah. of going through my body there. We, we wouldn't do a joke about something like that. <laughs> uh, Penelope Keith is recovering in hospital after being bitten by a mongoose. Uh, Red. Real. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> is that real? To beat the smoking ban, a Swiss bar owner has knocked a hole in his wall so patrons can lean out and technically be outside while uh, having a fag. Red. Real. Real, yes. Have you got the address? <laughs> <laughs> the newly elected president of Gabon is called Rufus M. Grapefruit. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely true. It's fake. <laughs> the man who has celebrated Christmas every day for the past 14 years has been found crucified in his back garden. Uh, right. That's fake. That is fake. Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> Surely that's the man who celebrated Easter yeah. every day for us. <laughs> and so it's always Christmas and never Easter. It's like, you know, finally Aslan came. <laughs> and finally, Noel Edmonds is developing a new TV quiz show called Beat the Monkey, in which the question master will be a monkey. Uh, Victoria. <laughs> fake. Real. No, not... <laughs> What? <laughs> oh. Well, that's the end oh, of the oh, quiz. Hold on a minute, can we just stop? How, how can that possibly work if the question master is a monkey? <laughs> I don't know. You can't make a quiz called Spank the Monkey. It's, in called, a... it's, called, it's not called Spank the Monkey. <laughs> it's, called, it's just called Beat the Monkey. <laughs> OK, so the winner is Reg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And as agreed, Reg will be getting a speedboat. Um, <laughs> uh, now, some of the stories you got wrong. Reg, you believed that Penelope Keith is recovering after being bitten by a mongoose. Yes. Do you know who Penelope Keith is? No, I do not. <laughs> and beat the monkey. Um, I think you went for that, Victoria. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. I didn't think you could have a TV show called Beat the Monkey. <laughs> well, I think it's fair to say it has not been commissioned. And it may be that you haven't helped its chances. <laughs> Can I say, it wasn't the title that caused me the real trouble. It was the fact that the question master was a monkey. <laughs> Obviously, that was before I saw Is this it? show. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you to my guests, Reginald D. Hunter, Victoria Corrin and Frank Skinner. Join me next week when coming out of the bubble will be Jermaine Greer, John Terry, Ed Byrne and John Richardson. Although I may have made one of those up. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>